I wasn't planning to do another video before the election today. I mean, it's not before the election, but it's during the election. Uh, I went, I voted this morning and there was nothing unusual, nothing that said, aha, that's a sign that, you know, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. But I came home and I was just reading through and looking at the latest polls and the real clear average and, you know, uh, Biden's going to win Florida narrowly and he's going to win all these other states and he's going to win and it's still, you know, a 90, 87% chance of him winning or something. And it, it, it suddenly struck me. And I have more questions than answers at this point, but I mean, there's only two possibilities. The polls are right. Biden wins. And there's all the things that, you know, will likely happen if that is indeed the case. But then I suddenly start to realize, what if the polls are wrong again? What do we make of it? What does it mean if Donald Trump is reelected? And all these polls, all these experts, all these pundits, everything we see in the news has been wrong. Think about that for a second. There are only two possibilities if Trump wins. If Donald Trump is reelected, it means one of two things. That the media, which includes reporting media and the pollsters, are all a bunch of morons who can't see their way clear. They can't see the forest with the trees or however, whatever analogy you want to use. But are they really idiots? I mean, I've seen some of these people. I've seen interviews with Nate Silver. I've read what he's written. He doesn't seem like a moron. He seems like a very intelligent guy. And I think these people are intelligent. So if they're wrong and they're intelligent, what does it mean? It must mean that they're wrong because they want to be wrong. And, and I thought back to uh, Ray Bradbury's book, Fahrenheit 451, published 1953. I was two years old. I didn't read it then. I didn't read it till I got to college. You may have read it. You may have seen, I think there's two movies they did. I saw the first movie. I didn't see the second movie. But Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit 451 is the temperature at which printed paper will burn, apparently. Um, and in the movie, I mean, it's a dystopian world in which the firemen aren't people who come and put out fires. There are people who come and start fires. They burn books. They burn records. They suppress the truth. That's what they do in this dystopian world. And then I suddenly wondered, is that, is that a dystopian world we're living in now? We're not looking at firefighters, at least not yet. But what about the pollsters? Are the pollsters the firemen? and the media at large, the, the firemen of Ray Bradbury's dystopian 1953 science fiction novel. I mean, after all, what are pollsters supposed to be doing? They're supposed to go out and do their surveys, measure public opinion, popular opinion, and then represent that in a, a numerical form, numbers, bar graphs, other kinds of graphs. They're supposed to reflect what exists in the popular mind. Because as individuals, we only see a small number of people compared to the whole population, 350 million people in this country. I don't know 350 million people. I don't know how they think. We all have little circles we move in. But the pollsters that go out and measure this in a much broader sense and then tell us how people are thinking and feeling. If they're wrong again, and not just a little bit wrong, you know, not just off by one or two, maybe three points, the margin of error, you know, one between one and three points. They're off by as much as they'd have to be off for Trump to be reelected, as they were in 2018, the governor's race in Florida, where they were off by seven and a half percent. I mean, that's a huge margin. If they're off by that much and they're not morons, they must know what they're doing. Are they the new firemen? Are pollsters not using the polls to reflect the popular mood, but using the polls to shape the popular mood. Are the journalists who used to do, you know, who, what, where, when, and why, you go out, you do your research, you interview people, you look for documentation, and then from that, 
you, you do your story and you turn this information, this, these data points into a narrative. You weave it into a narrative that people will want to sit down and read. Have they become like Bradbury's firemen? Whereas instead of looking for what's going on in the world and reflecting it in a narrative, just as the pollster is reflected in a poll, that today what journalists do is start off with the narrative and then go out and try to find individual pieces that will support their story. Again, they're like Ray Bradbury's firemen. They're not putting out fires, they're starting fires. The pollsters don't reflect public opinion, they're shaping it. The media doesn't try to f find what's going on and put it in a narrative form. They create the narrative and then try to shove it down people's throats. Is that where we're at? Are we in a dystopian world? Are we in Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 dystopian novel? And that's a scary thought. Because I don't know what you do about that. What do we do in a country where we have a First Amendment and freedom of the press and freedom of speech? What do you do if the press, while free, is working to destroy the country, is working to change the country? From their point of view, it's bettering the country. From my point of view, they'd be destroying the country. But what do you do if you get into that situation? I don't know the answer to this. Hopefully, maybe it's not even a problem. But in the next three to five days, maybe even we'll find out tonight. I mean, if Trump wins big, we'll know tonight, probably, early tomorrow morning. If that happens, and we know that the pollsters and the journalists have all been wrong, not from stupidity. You can't argue with stupidity. It's been four years, several elections, and they're still wrong. They're still feeding us bull. What are the implications of that? What are the implications, even if Trump wins, moving forward? How do we deal with that? How do you change the media? What do you do with the pollsters? I mean, you can ignore them, but that doesn't make them go away. You can ignore the media and not read, not watch CNN. I can't even watch it. My cable company or my, my cable provider or streaming provider, I should say, Fubu, dropped him. I guess nobody was watching, not enough people were watching. But what do we do? What are the implications of that? How, how do we prevent this from going on? I mean, the, the purpose of the First Amendment is to protect a free press. But what if a free press is lying all the time? What if a free press is, you know, feeding you bull? You know, purposefully distorting reality to shape public opinion, which is, is what they have to be doing. Either that or they're all morons. I said, Nate Silver has to be complicit in some sort of left-wing conspiracy of sorts, or he's an idiot. It's one or the other. Unless, of course, Joe Biden wins. So we'll see, and we'll know soon enough. But it, it hit me this morning, and it was a, a, just a, a really scary thought about the future of this country. Like I said, living in Florida, I have good reason to believe that this is what's going on. Like I said our governor's race in 2018, they were off by 7.5% with regard to the vote. The, the Gillum, the Democrat, was supposed to win by 7 points. He lost by a half a point. That's a huge amount. And it was a shock to people. But these are the same pollsters who said they had corrected everything after 2016. They know what they did wrong. They fixed the problem. And they hadn't. It's not in Florida two years ago. We'll see what happens today. But in the next three to five days, maybe one to five days, if Donald Trump is reelected, that's the next thing we have to start thinking about. What do we do? We'll know that this is going on if he wins. If he wins, we know what the media has been doing. And it has to be purposeful at this point. They've sold out. They're pushing their agenda. They're not reporting the news anymore. And what are we going to do about it? 
I don't have an answer. But I think we need to start thinking about that. Do you have any ideas? Let me know in a comment. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post, post new videos. Share the channel with your friends. Share the channel with your enemies for all I care. I don't care. I don't know. Subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, you know, stay strong no matter what happens today. Don't give up. And keep fighting.